stand and knock at every door, 10,000 blessings in his hand to satisfy the poor. Behold, he said, I bleed and die to bring me to my rest. Here, sinners, while I'm passing by, and be forever blessed. Will you despise my bleeding love and choose, choose the way to hell, or in the glorious realm above, with me forever dwell? Amazing sight, the Savior stand, knocks at every door. Oh, amazing
can stand. Have a scripture. Have a scripture today would be coming from Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. When you have it, just say amen and say I'm ready. All right. Okay. Chapter 3, verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Yes. Set your affections on things above mm -hmm. oh, yes. and not on things on the earth. Yes. So you are dead and your life is hid mm -hmm. with Christ in God. Mm -hmm. When Christ who is, is our life shall appear, Amen. then you, we, we, shall also appear with him in glory. Amen. May God have a blessing to the hearers and readers of his word. And I read you Colossians 3, 1 through 4. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Give yeah, most gracious God. We come, Lord God, with humble hearts and humble minds, Lord God. Giving you the praise, the glory, and honor that you deserve, God. Yes, Jesus. Realizing, God, we are nothing without you, God. So, God, we humble ourselves at your feet, God. Lord God, thinking about what you gave us, Lord. Yes. I don't count this cross, God. Yes. Thank you, God, for allowing you, Lord Jesus. you to, to send your only begotten Son. Yes, Lord. So that a dying world, Lord God, can see your face. God. Yes, yes, yes. So, God, we believe, yes. Lord God, and Lord, that one day, God, we will see your face. Yes. So, God, we humble ourselves in the presence of your Son, God. Yes. Humble hearts and humble minds. Yes. Humble souls, Lord God. Make humble actions. Yes, Lord Jesus. God, we honor you, God. Yes. Thank you, Lord God, for every soul, Lord God, yes. that's dark in this door. Yes. Here in Macedonia, God. We thank you, Lord God, for the headship of this church. God. Yes. yes. We thank you, Lord God, for every officer and every person that's here. Yes. Rightfully placed, God. Yeah. Lord God, too righteous and too just, Lord God, yes. to get us thing, God. Yes. Yes. So, God, we give you the glory, God. Yes. yes. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. Yes. Thank you for the dark days, Lord yes. God. Yes. Lord God, it's those days, Lord God, that keep yes. us on our knees, Lord God. Yes. And keep us looking to the hill with coming in our hands. Lord God, the Bible says, lean not to our own understanding, but yes. So, Lord God, give us the heart, the mind, and the ability, God, to lean on you, God. Some call you a Lord. Some call you a Savior. Lord God, this morning we call you our deliverer. And God, we thank you, Lord God, for delivering us out of the hands of the evil one, God. Lord God, we need your people in this world of God.
Misa is our children's Sunday school teacher Amen. and Minister Davis is our youth Sunday school teacher. Amen. And this coming Sunday, you will have, Sunday morning, you will have a Sunday school class online for your children and for your youth to view before you come to church. Amen? Amen. And we've been working hard for the last three weeks. And we will also, uh, periodically, will have the youth to come up and give us an in inspiration. Amen? Amen? So the youth minister and the children's, well, sister, I'm calling you the, the, the children's minister. I want y'all to say amen. And say, we love y'all. We love y'all. Okay, God bless you. church, number one, mm -hmm. and number two is to be educated. Amen. And education is the key to success. Right. And, and, and that's that's what we, we are attempting to do here. Um, uh, we're going to, like Reverend Andrew said, we're going to talk to the youth. Um, we're going to um, deal with your, your language. Amen. You know, whatever you got, whatever you want to bring to this ministry, whatever you got to offer, Amen. we're willing to take it and we're willing to listen. Um, God is God gave us two ears and one mouth. So here at Macedonia, we, uh, we do more listening than talking. And, and that's what we're trying to do with our youth. And um, like um, this needs to say, we're going to start with Miss Kay. You got to start with something. So that's what we're going to do. Thank y'all. And God bless you. Yes, you finished. You finished, Kayla? Okay. Mm -hmm. Amen. God bless you. All right. How's everybody this afternoon? It's almost afternoon, isn't it? No? Nope. What time is it? It's a quarter after. Amen? So at this time, Ms. Mom, you're going to come and read our history. And right after that, we're going to have um, our men's ministry and then our praise team sing a song, and Pastor will come back and introduce our messenger for the day. And I'm going to take my seat. Amen? Amen. All right. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen? Amen. Good morning. Down through the years, Nassau Baptist Church, this is their 151st church anniversary. And this is a part of the history. In the year 1869, a council of strong believers gathered and organized Macedonia Baptist Church we were born out of vision planted by God. The following ministers were present. Reverend Albert, Reverend, sorry, Reverend Talbert, Reverend Barnes, and Reverend J.M. Gibson as they were led by the scripture written in the book of Matthew 16 and 18. And I say unto thee, without art Pia, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. skip down to like I said we have 151 years 
of history. Amen. So in the present time, we have as much prayer on November the 16th, November 2019, the church called Reverend Daryl Block as a pastor of Macedonia Baptist Church. Installed as a pastor of Macedonia Baptist Church. Under his leadership, 13 members joined under watch care, 15 members joined under Christian experience, and three were baptized. They also implemented new, now new member orientation classes began. Leadership training, discipleship training, healthcare ministry was formed, and there were three trustees appointed Trustee James Harris, Trustee Dennis Padgett, and Trustee Rodney Madison. Trustee Hudson was called from labor to war during the year 2020. On October 13, 2020, Brother Alfonso Moore Jr. and, and Sister Helen Vincent were, call, were called from labor to reward. As 2020 come to an end, we can look back over 151 years and see that the Lord has blessed Macedonia Baptist Church in a mighty way. And it, it is the prayers of this church that we seek, read, and teach. Amen. <laughs>
<laughs> After the choir sing, the next preaching voice you will hear will be that of my brother, my friend, the Reverend Jonathan Harris of the Second Mount Morale Baptist Church in downtown Augusta on Brown Street. Right, amen. Right. Y'all hear him, if you will. He solicits your amen. Choir, y'all sang and bring this brother up and let him preach from the depth of his soul. Amen.
be your own worship. Come unto me, 
And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Amen. You may be seated. So my brothers and sisters, for a subject for this 151 year church anniversary, we have the following. Stand with the Lord. Stand with the Lord. Uh, my brothers and sisters, the Bible declares that God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. Yeah. And this means that everybody will have some up and down mountains in their lives every so often. So rest assured, my brothers and sisters, that struggle will sometimes attack everybody up in the household of faith. Because as good as God's people are, you better understand that nobody is immune to trouble. Nobody is exempt from the struggle. The trouble that we have in the world, they know exactly where you live. They even know where the pastor's place of residence happens to be. And since trouble is in the business of causing trouble in all of our lives, we realize that as the body of Christ, we may get a double for the trouble kind of deal every so often. If you have lived long enough, you know that trouble does not discriminate. You need to understand that when trouble comes your way or in the church, sometimes trouble will not attack you by itself. If trouble can't get to you, trouble won't come after your man or your woman. If trouble can't get to the parents, trouble will come after the children. Trouble is here to cause trouble for the household of faith. And sometimes trouble will not attack you by itself because trouble is here to show us that even trouble has some backup. In other words, trouble is going to make it a family affair. What am I talking about this morning? You've got to understand that trouble has a friend called struggle. Struggle got a mama called frustration. Frustration got a father called hardship. Hardship has an auntie called sorrow. Sorrow got a cousin called sickness. Sickness got a Nemo called an uphill journey. Uphill journey got an uncle called stress. Stress got a happy called worry. Worry has an MR called misery. Misery got a nephew called hopeless. Hopeless got an associate called woe is me. Woe is me got a big mama called confusion. Confusion got a sugar daddy called persecution. Persecution got a niece called complaining. Complaining got a homegirl called Heartbreak got a boyfriend called problems. Problems got a side chick called suffering. Suffering got a set of twins called trials and tribulations. They all answer to the storms of life. Trouble is here to cause trouble up in the church. When I place a pause and a call to tell somebody on today that the church is a mighty mechanism. Look at your neighbor and say mighty mechanism. The church is a mighty mechanism. And the church can navigate through the troubles of life because the church has an engine called faith, a spark plug called joy, a GPS called the Holy Ghost, a transmission called amazing grace, a few ones called mercy, an alternator called love, and a master mechanic called Jesus. And so the church can navigate through the struggles of life because the church will stand with the Lord. Stand with the Lord. And so, my brothers and sisters, with this understanding, I submit to the household of faith that, that as we are gathered here in 2020, there may be some questions on everybody's mind. Some questions. Yeah. That need to be addressed up in the church. Oh, Since COVID-19 is present and accounted for, perhaps there are questions about what tomorrow will bring your way. Questions about how can God's people be pastored through the struggles of life. Well, I'm here to tell somebody right now that these are important questions. Yeah. But we need to understand that in spite of all these important questions, there is yet an even more severe question presented in our text when Moses said, who is on the Lord's side? 
who is on the Lord's side in 2020? This question deals in turn with Moses when he came down from receiving the Ten Laws of God. When he tried to give the Ten Commandments to the people. And we find in our text that many people, even today, they say that they are on the same side as the Lord. Folk today who are centered in their religion, they say they are on the same side as Almighty God. But all they are doing in 2020 is simply lying and denying the will of God in their lives. We got people who say, oh yes, God, with their mouth. But in their heart, they said, Jesus, you got to hit the door. In other words, they are shaking and faking with God. In their heart, they tell us that, God, I'm with you, but in actuality, God, I am against you. What is happening in the church when people refuse to stand with the Lord? Jesus tells us in Matthew 7 that not everybody who hears the Lord, the Lord will answer. As a matter of fact, some folk, they're going to get some choice words from the Lord when he says, depart from me, for I know you not. The question is, who is truly standing with the Lord? My brothers and sisters, in 2020, you have to begin to look at more than what you see on the outside in 2020, but you've got to start looking at what is happening on the inside of you. Because before you can criticize anybody up in the church, you've got to look at the man and woman in the mirror to make sure that you are right with God, Lord, My brothers and sisters, we are told on today to be more than hearers of the word. But do us as well, and so it becomes necessary that we understand the context in which this question is posed by Moses to the nation of Israel. And so in looking at this scripture, we find that while Moses was up on the mountain meeting with the Lord, people, you know people, they became restless. They were waiting around in the camp. They became frustrated about what was not happening. Yeah. Yeah. They were saying Moses was taking too long. Yeah. They were saying Moses, he ain't coming back. Yeah. And so they looked at Aaron. He was second in charge. Uh -huh. Your brother Moses, he ain't back yet. So they began to look at Aaron strangely. They began to feel some type of way because their leader Moses was no longer around. In other words, they could no longer raise a praise. Their walk could no longer match their talk. And they became frustrated and stuck in their ruts. They were looking at Aaron. and they started putting pressure on him, saying, look here now. Look here, Moses. You're taking too long. You're going to make us somebody else, something else to worship. In other words, Aaron, he could not deal with the pressure of their complaining, their mumbling, and their grumbling. Everybody needs to understand that there would be some complaining up in the church every now and again. Right. But when this happens, this is your moment to plant your feet firmly in God's word so that you can stand with the Lord. Right. So Aaron, he, he bowed down to the pressure. He did not stand with the Lord, and thus he made the golden idol. And so God sent Moses back down from the mountain to find out that the Lord he was ready to destroy every single one of them. Oh, Moses began to plead their case to God, and he called on those. He asked the question, who is on the Lord's side? My brothers and sisters, we need this same call of commitment in 2020 because people are yet slipping into idol worship. Oh, I gotta say it again. People are yet slipping into idol worship. And some of us, are, we have some idols in our own lives on today. What am I saying? I'm saying your idol could be that job that is slowly killing you and your blood pressure. You hear people say all the time, they don't just have to roll me on out of here. And yes, you're not in a wheelchair, 
You ain't in no car. You out on a stretcher and you are being rolled out of there because you have let that eye to take control of your life. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, your eye could be an unhealthy relationship that is messing up your other relationship. And that place a pause in the cause. If that's somebody in your life, if that significant other is not bringing anything to the table, if he's not lifting you up to get close to God, if that person is bringing you down, then you need to what? My brothers and sisters, it could be the fact that you are more concerned about winning the lottery than winning soul. This kind of thinking, this is the stuff that's becoming our idols up in the church. It is causing us to no longer stand with the Lord. And if you're going to be standing on the wrong side of the Lord, you've got to understand it's going to mess up some stuff in your life. Brothers and sisters, all of us need to realize that there will come a time when you need to lay your bad attitude to the side and simply be like the pastor and first lady, be like members of the church, and stand with the Lord. The question is, whose team are you really playing for in 2020? Are you standing with the Lord? Because some people attend church and that's all they do with their time. Sunday after Sunday they attend church. Because they think they are fooling people. You need to understand you've got to learn to do some self-inventory every now and again. You've got to look back over your life and begin to thank God and say, Father, the Lord God, I know you broke me from an idol all the way. God, you've been so good to me. And because of that, I'm going to stand. In other words, if you're going to stand with the Lord, yes. you've got to have a particular attitude. Oh, yes. You can't have the attitude of Judas and betray Jesus with a kiss. You've got to have the attitude of Joshua. When Joshua said, if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day, this day, this day, whom you will serve. I'm going to tell you that when you have the good attitude of Joshua in the church, we're talking about the kind of attitude that shall set the captives free. The kind of attitude that will build the household of faith up and tear the works of iniquity down. The kind of attitude that will let someone know it's time to keep the faith and finish the course. The kind of attitude that will tell somebody we can be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. As we examine our thoughts, stand with the Lord. There are two points to ponder in this text that made the sons of Levi worthy to stand with Moses. Point number one, you have to choose to stand. You have to choose to stand. And then point number two, you've got to keep God's command. Keep God's command. And so in addressing this first point, all believers must realize that nothing good comes from riding the fence. <laughs> nothing good comes from riding the fence. Just pretending you are for the Lord. Some of us yet believe that we can get away with serving two masters. But no matter what, you are going to love the one and hate the other one. When the matter deals with serving the Lord, you've got to choose to stand with Jesus. Because right, right is always going to be right, and wrong is always going to be wrong. So in choosing to stand. We all need to have the attitude of Moses in order to stand on the right side of the Lord because all throughout the life of that you are living, whether you are teaching or preaching, whether you are trying or testifying, whether you are sinning or winning, whether you are telling lies all night or whether you treat everybody right, the church must choose to stand with the Lord. And in other words, you have to make some choices. You got to choose Jesus. You got to choose to live righteously. Yeah. Right. You've got to choose to understand that if you've got a problem with somebody in the church, don't talk about the person, go and talk to the person and make it right. You've got to choose to stand and say, I should stand with the Lord because on Christ.
Christ, the song of rock, I stand and all of the ground is sinking sand. The church needs to choose to stand and declare to the world we stand for truth, we stand for love, we stand for life, we stand for peace, we stand for joy, we stand by faith, we stand up for the pastor of Macedonia Baptist Church at Percy Sick Old Chair Road in Martinez. Lord, we are standing together because teamwork still makes the dream work in 2020. If you choose, with the Lord. My brothers and sisters, the sons of Levi, when Moses asked the question, who is on the Lord's side? They chose to come unto him. And so, my brothers and sisters, we come to the understanding that when you choose to stand, it is because you have taken heed of God's command. God is still calling the church. Even after 151 years, he is still calling Macedonia Baptist Church to still heed the command. What am I saying? It says, Moses said unto the atmosphere of faith, who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. So the church can look at this text to see the example of the sons of Levi. They gathered together to side with the Lord our God. Yes. And by keeping God's command, the sons of Levi claimed the right to stand for the household. Right. In keeping God's command, the sons of Levi said that we're going to be the leaders up in the church that God has called us to be. In keeping God's command, the sons of Levi said we're going to speak against the things that were contrary to the will of God. Right. The sons of Levi kept the command of God. And they came to write to remind Israel to remember the God that brought them out of the slave pits of Egypt, uh, as well as the God who brought them their Red Sea situation. And they said on that day we are talking about standing and heeding the command of God, who's going to give us a land flowing in milk and honey. And when we look at the sons of Levi, it is came the right to tell a dying world uh, that the wage of sin is still death, but the gift of Jesus. Christ is eternal life. I wonder do I have at least one witness in the middle who does not mind saying on the day I'm going to choose to stand with God and I'm going to be the command that called. In other words, you are going to tell someone who is on the Lord's side. You want to say, Lord, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Send me our Lord. Do I have at least one person in the building? Today, that God, I will stand on your side and tell a dying world that you are good all of the time, and all of the time you are good. Is there anybody in the building on today who can stand right now and say, God, I'm going to choose to stand, God, I'm going to heed your command, and I'm going to tell someone on tonight that when you wait on the Lord, He shall renew your strength. The church that when you stand with God, trouble is going to come your way. Trouble is going to attack you day and day. But you got to understand that when trouble brings you to your knees, you can say, Father, I stretch my hand in me. No other help I know. You can tell somebody right now when you are standing with the Lord that trouble may come your way. that same person that, that weeping may endure for a night but joy joy oh, you know this is the challenge of Macedonia Baptist Church you've got to be able to look the world in the eye and you've got to be willing to tell somebody you can serve who you want to serve in 2020 you can go where you want to go in 2020 you can move how you want to move in 2020 you can love who you want to love in 2020. You can praise who you want to praise in 2020. You can trust who you want to trust in 2020. You can even cuss the way you want to cuss in 2020. But as we in our house, we will serve. We will serve the Lord. Because we choose to stand. And we heed the command. Yes. The question is, 
Will you stand with the Lord? God bless you.
say, choose for yourself this day who you will serve. Today is decision time. Who, who will you serve in times like these? Will you give in to your circumstance or, or will you stand on the Lord's side? Because scripture says it. I will never leave you. Yeah. Nor will I forsake you. Even in 2020, when things seem as if though the bottom is about to fall out. Yes, Lord. COVID cases rise.
follow the CDC guidelines. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 And, 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 and I want you to be very serious about wearing your mask. Amen. And I, I'm going to demonstrate the proper use. Not to insult your intelligence, but to make sure you put it over your nose. Come on now. Oh, but Lord, 